Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's matchup at the SLU tournament. Today we have St. James JV versus our La Salette JV. And I am by myself today. And Mr. Lynch wants me to quiet down because he is annoyed by my broadcasting, but that is okay. In any case, I'm by myself today because um, my color commentator, Malachi Martin, is currently at La Salette. His job is to uh, serve MC for Paul Sunday, so that's very important. And Father Carl has to go to his mission. And I will be joined later by Coach Michael Vitri, the head coach of La Salette Rugby. But as of now, it is just me and maybe a couple of accents. In any case, they already started the game and started the game of scrum. Now they get it to the back. So we got John Bronner here. Number 15, a good pass fake is finally brought to ground. Marco Cruz gets it to Brogan Hanley, who makes a cut inside. Tackled by Henry Spencer and another. James Hanlon cuts it to the line. And an immediate try. That didn't take too long there. Now here with the St. James teams, St. James team, they have also a couple players that we know from St. Vincent's. Namely, I'm um, sorry, namely Ivan Tomac, Henry Spencer, and one of their managers, well, it's both of their managers, Phil Tomac and William Drum, all from St. Vincent's. Also, Case Spencer is another one. Marco Cruz can't really get the kickoff. Start off with 0%. Earlier today, he was having a hard time against the wind, and his teammates were giving him hard positions on the field to kick from. But Marco is usually a good kicker, so hopefully he can come back from this missed kick for later ones. St. James coming back up, ready to kick off. And we are up. There's a bit of a grubber there. Anthem Hodal picks it up and cuts inside. And a good run there. Breaks a couple tackles. Solid Cruz playing nine. Gets it to Baby Rhino. Tony Carlisle. And here we got Henry Betts taking it into contact. Gives Russ just past the 50. Right now it looks like there are more forward play going on for La Salette. There's a knock on. In the ruck, it seems. It seems like Solo Cruz might have got his fingertips on that a bit. Couldn't quite get away with it. It's also like good to note that since this is a St. Louis tournament, there are lots of families from the St. Louis area and also families from the middle of the Missouri area, also known as Silex, Missouri. Bowling Green, Missouri, and other places in middle of nowhere, Missouri, where it's just farmland. And they are here watching their sons play some rugby. So there's Andrew Sick wearing the scrum cap. Now Henry Betts coming around, breaking some tackles. Gets the offload to Sheamus. Sheamus passes it back to Andrew. Andrew Sick just drives through the middle. Gets past the 50. Solo Cruz gives him Mason Wilson. A quick tackle there, but good ruck over by the forwards. Thomas Mackin gets it out to Johnny Bronner on the far side of the field. Now we have somebody plowing through, and I think that's Patrick McDonald. Now we got Thomas Mackin passes it out to the backs. Andrew Sink breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle. They pass it out to Brogan Hadlin. He gets it out to Justin Cadano at lock. Turns on the speed. Bit of a tackle there on the sideline. And a good quick ruck over. I'd like to see these rucks from the La Salette forwards. They're very good at it. Here we got Benny Garno. Very strong freshman taking it into contact. Oh, a bit of a fumble there. 
and St. James gets advantage. And they call the knock on. There'll be a scrum. So this scrum is should be decently easy for the Lions because they do have the bigger pack. For it's not very often that Lasla has the bigger pack, but in this case they do. We'll see if they can steal it. No, it's a good scrum from St. James. They're able to get it out. Benny Garno tackles high. Over the shoulder, that's a high tackle. Now they get it out to the backs, which you haven't really seen in the varsity games. Marco Cruz slings one down. And has been passed into touch. Now there'll be a line out here for La Salette. Their first line out of today. Looks like we have Patrick McDonald throwing it in. And all the forwards are inside the line. They make the play. Parks the signals. And a good win. There, jumper was Ben Blood. And now to get it out to the backs. Skip pass a bit long there. Brogan Halen can get it, but he gets a hand on. And a good tackle from Brogan Halen. Even though he may be small, he is very strong. And he's very aggressive. He's not afraid to get in there. All that good Irish blood. And the sir calls a penalty. Not releasing the tackler. It looks like we have some varsity players from um, St. James playing on the JV team. For example, we have Thomas Steele. We have Charles Green. And I also recognize another. It looks like we have a uh, Dubé on the field as well for St. James. He is the jumper in the black scrum cap. Oh no, he switched to the front. The throw wasn't very good. Here, Ben Blood takes advantage of it and grabs it. And Los Angeles set their offense again. Back in, not a very good pass there to uh, Benny Garno, which will result in a knock on and advantage for St. James. Chip kick from the 10. Mason Wilson breaks one tackle. He's looking to get something done. An offload. Solo Cruz takes it in. He's about to get tackled. Looks for the offload. Gets it to Andrew Sick. Cuts inside. Cuts back inside. Finally bought, brought down. And now it's back out to the backs. Henry Betts retrieves the pass from a from behind. Looks to the offload. Can't find anyone. Safely goes to the ground. Now we have Thomas Mackin from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He is an Eagles fan and a 76ers fan. And now we got Ben Blood. There's been a lot of forward movement here from the La Salette JV. And we also have some bigger backs on the JV, such as Andrew Sick and Henry Betts, who can really pay a toll. Marco Cruz is very shifty. He's also pretty tall. And now they're back out to Patrick McDonald. Offload to John Bronner. John Bronner may not be fast in a straight line sprint, but hey, he could juke someone out any day, as we saw in the basketball season. Solid crew. Gets it back to the back. Andrew Stick looking to make some tackles. Here's Cadano from Arcadia, California. Bit of an offload there, too. Back in, but it's stolen by St. James. Sir calls a knock on. Scrum two. 
St. James. There's quite a few helicopters flying around over here in St. Louis. Probably because it's a big place with a lot of a lot of places to see, a lot of news going on. Probably some uh, who knows what kind of things are going on. Maybe a couple of police helicopters. Now we got a scrum here for St. James. Looks like another knock on in the line out. I'm sorry, not the line out, the ruck. And they go for the kick. Good strategic play to get the ball out. It goes into touch. John Corner retrieves the ball for La Salette. John Corner is managing along with Gordon Bordos. Gordon Bordos, the line judge currently. He's holding the yellow flag uh, right behind Patrick McDonald. He's going to throw it in. Also on the crew, we got Tom Staffke doing all the media work with the computers. If we didn't have Tom Staffke, he wouldn't exist. Ian Fahey using the film. And a good steal there by St. James. And to bring the ball to ground. Well, looks like Seamus Highland comes away with this. And there's a lot of losing balls going around. And the center calls a forward pass. And there'll be a scrum here, St. James. We also would like to thank all our supporters from uh, different areas of the U.S., like such as the Esparzas from Silver City, New Mexico, have come up to watch the games and support La Salette here. We have also have a couple other families. They just left my mind. I cannot remember who they were. Let's say something was not very safe in the scrum. The sir goes to check it out to make sure that everything is safe because scrums are the most complex thing in rugby and also the most dangerous. So everything has to be perfect in a scrum. And if the sir, his job is to make sure everything is safe and that no one gets injured. The ball has gone in and out looks like the sir calls not lifting and there's a penalty awarded to St. James Thomas Stiegel holding the ball gives it off to a teammate they're going to go for a kick Johnny Barr getting ready to field the kick an unlucky bounce there. John Barr is able to get ahead on for the other team, Ken. And they bring it down. Sulla Cruz to Andrew Sick. Cuts on the inside. Offloads it to Thomas Mackin. Bit of a bounce pass there. To Marco Cruz on the other side of the field. And they have called a knock on. I guess Mackin bounced it forward. It's another scrum. We'd also like to thank the families of St. Louis for their hospitality and laying the Lost Light Rugby team sleep in the Queen of the Holy Rosary Academy School Building. We're also grateful for the delicious food that the, the Hanlins and the Lillises and the Kellermans have cooked up for us and their sacrifice. We know it's really hard to Feed a bunch of hungry rugby players. I say James was there on scrum. Lost the rugby hard. Looks like Solo Cruz comes away with the ball. Gets it off to Tony Carlisle. Marco Cruz finds a hole. Best runner on the cross country team. And here comes Andrew Sick. It's a rolls. Here's Brogan the other wing. Can they tackle him out of bounds? No, they don't. Good job by Brogan Hatless saying good bounce there. Seamus Island. And they go back to the advantage. High tackle. 
Let's see what Thomas Mackin wants to do with this opportunity. Looks like he's going to kick the touch. Marco Cruz offers some advice on where to kick it. It just doesn't go far enough. And a good move there. And a good wing. But Mason Wilson is there because there's no support. It steals the ball and passes it out to Henry Betts. <coughs> With about 6.15 remaining in here in this first half. Solid Cruz gets out of the top stack and does some back work here. And you stick like yourself offload to hospital pass. Kind of bounces around. And he calls the offside penalty advantage. Going back to the place where it was because the ball went backwards. And subbing in here, we have Owen Whitehead coming in for number seven, Benny Garno. Owen Whitehead looks like he'll be playing a flanker. Now Solid Cruz goes to start the play. Gets it to Tony Carlisle. Oh, good pass there to Seamus Highland. Almost in the touch, but they stay in. And there's another knock on called. Now Los Salette's JV has been knocking the ball on quite a bit this first half. So far, I don't think they've had any scrums for them. Except for the one at the very beginning of the game in which they won. Well, St. James has been doing a good job keeping their scrums. And a good sturdy strong scrum it is. St. James looks to kick, but very good defense by Los Salen. They can't get the opportunity. Uh, trying to counter up here. And the nine takes it in. Now Shaver Sadler looks to push him back. A good active tackle there. St. James having a hard time getting through this Los Salen defense. Good line there. They're keeping the line. There's no holes really to pierce. And Los Salen are making all their tackles and only pushing back. And there's the kick we've been waiting for. John Bronner receives it. Breaks the ankle before he even got there. John Bronner runs it in. Hostile pass there. And the score. A try. In rugby terms. There's Joseph Cadano. A good run there by John Bronner. And he uses his court, uh, pardon me, field vision. This is not basketball. He uses his field vision and saw when got the good little alley-oop there. Oh, sorry, this isn't basketball. He got that good, oh, what would you call it, an outlet pass? In any case, it was a good, a good assist there too. Um, Joseph Cadano from Arcadia, California, giving him the chance to score a try. But yet again, it is a, Sideline kick here for Marco Cruz. Let's we'll see how he can do with it. He puts it up there under it. And it sneaks in there, but right in front of the right post. Beautiful kick there from Marco Cruz. If I'm not mistaken, his name is Marco Daniel Cruz Alcantar from Leon, Mexico. Now we've had the score, 12 to zero so far in this first half with about three minutes remaining. The final game of the day for Los Salette Rugby. The final of four. First two games varsity, the first game of varsity against St. Ignatius, uh, sorry, St. Thomas, where we lost by seven points and only seven points were scored that entire game, seven to zero. And Lasolette pulls it in. Good rucking over here by Lasolette. And we have good back line movement. Andrew Six takes the advantage of a hole. Gets it back to Tony Carlisle. Tony Carlisle to the wing. Marco Cruz. Good moves there. Breaking those tackles. Look at that boy go. He's got happy feet. 
As Solo Cruz pulls it out of the ruck, gets it to Thomas Mack, and T-Mack passes it to Henry Betts, who finds a nice little hole there and exploits it. Solo Cruz takes it. Another T-Mack run. Here breaks another tackle. There's no one really there to offload, but here we got Brogan Hadlin. Goes down with it. Good ruck over there by John Bronner. And Owen Whitehead. Seamus Hadlin now. The Hadlins are also from St. Louis, Missouri, so their fam is here cheering them on. Henry Betts. Taking it a bit slow to go down there. High tackle penalty awarded to La Salette. That's all Cruz. Quick task. Gives to Seamus Hallin. Plowing his way through. And Seamus Hallin scores the try. These Hallins are on fire this game. And last game, Seamus Hallin scored a try. The very first try, and Brogan Hallin right afterwards scored another one. It's on this home soil, I tell you. Now another sideline kick from Marco Cruz in the same area as before. It's really hard to get. This kick in professional leagues is a 30% kick make rate. Oh, it bounces right off the, the post. Couldn't really go in. And it didn't get a give really with it. All in all, a good kick, a good attempt. As Gordon Bornos looks like he loves his job, runs back down the field to mark the 10 meter line. At the 40. And here we go again, St. James kick it off. And there's the boot. A good field from Owen Whitehead. It's almost like he's playing baseball or something. Got that ground ball, throw the first for an out or a double play. Now we got the backs at work. John Bronner hops into the line, getting it to Marco Cruz. It turns on to speed. Yoinks a player. Got another one off his feet. Off to John Bronner. John Bronner runs it down the field. There's no way he's not that fast, but he is. John Bronner gets it down and touches it down the middle. Very nonchalantly. Scoring a try. He probably just rolled his eyes there. But what a try. What a play. Marco Cruz with a trucking truck. Now that was just beautiful. I say, jolly good show, chap. My father Carlisle isn't kidding when he says Johnny Bronner, great sort of people like seaweed. His just prowess in taking the ball in. Just makes everyone get in a bad mood. Hell, everyone except his team. And, and now it's halftime. So we have at halftime the score 24 nil. Or nihil in Latin. And we're going to take a quick break here to stretch our ears. I want to stretch my ears because this is a very painful experience with very small headphones. But we'll see you at the second half.
Welcome to the second half, ladies and gentlemen, of this slew tournament. JV game, La Salette and St. James Academy. Here to score is 24-0 in this second half. And St. James will be kicking off to the La Salette Lions. And we have some new players on the field here. Looks like we got Darren Esparza on the field. Also, we have Hugh Dvorak, a freshman on the field. And it would seem that we have another one in for John Bronner, but I cannot make out who it would be. J.P. Agbaparone, that'll be him. J.P. Agbaparone's in the game. As we saw last game, he would burn people on the sideline with his speed. But here, Henry Spencer kicks it off right to Patrick McDonald. Brace the line. That's a man you do not want to run into in a dark alley. What a run. Patrick McDonald, Arcadia, California, with a couple many yards. But here, since we are in this second half and at the very beginning, and since Father Carl isn't here, and since there is no A-side game afterwards, I have the pleasure of interviewing and broadcasting alongside of La Salette's head coach and athletic director, Coach Michael Vitri. How are we doing, Elijah? I'm doing great. Are you ready for some? Well, I don't know if I can, how good I'll be with the questions or anything, but hopefully that people will learn some things about La Salette rugby and rugby in general. Yeah, absolutely. But first, before we start, we might as well mention that try there. Looks like Joseph Cadano scores a try. Yeah, Seaside's look really good today. Yeah, they have. So, since the Seaside's are looking good, uh, might as well bring up the first question. What is the importance of Seaside with all these young players? Yeah, so Father Colin and I talked about this a little bit in the previous game, but... Um, you know, our program's set up with an A, a B, and a C side, so our A side's, you know, of our C side, the B side's the, the JV, and our C side's our frost soft side, and uh, that C side level has e even a couple of levels within it, so, um, you know, it, right now it's really split into three different groups just because of the amount of kids that we have. Everybody, everybody at La Salette plays rugby if they're, you know, uh, medically capable to, so um, that C side's a pretty big group, and, um, you know, the biggest thing for them is just getting an exposure to the game, getting a, a basic understanding of the game. And the ones that are, uh, you know, able to, we try to, you know, start to develop some of the skills that they're going to need for the varsity level uh, a bit sooner. Um, and um, the biggest thing for them is just getting them experience playing the game. Um, I know that maybe sounds really simple, but you even see them executing some things that, we have our, our B and our A side execute, so you see them running some of our uh, some of the triangles out with the back line. I think just before the half, they scored uh, running one of those plays. I think it was John Bronner that put in that try before the half. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. Right, so they, they, they're running some of the back line plays that even the A side is running and, uh, you know, supporting the ball from open play. And uh, it's really good to see them doing that, um, uh, you know, at this level. It'll fare them well for when they when they come up. That's a great play there from Thomas Mackin. It's a good run. Got some good meters there. And a good switch play there. Seamus Hanlon finds the hole. And Seamus Hanlon puts another one down for a try. Seamus Hanlon's one of those guys that, uh, that, that's why they call him Moose. That's why they call him Moose. He runs hard into contact. And I, I tell you what, he runs onto the ball at pace. Uh, one of the best in the program at, at any level. So he'll be, a, he'll be a really good player. He'll develop into a really good player. But things like that, right? We want to see guys at the developmental level Right, doing doing these basic skills like that. So he sees a gap, he hits it hard, and he runs onto it in contact. He didn't, you know, he didn't uh, hesitate. There wasn't a, yeah. a hesitation in, in, in finding that gap. Right, he saw the space and he took it. And um, t things like that are, are are difficult to teach. And so, um, you know, they need to be able to do that and execute that at the varsity level. And so, irrespective of of wins or running anything necessarily correctly, we want to see them looking for opportunities like that. And if they can't do that. We want to, you know, basically force them to do these skills, even if it were to mean, we'll say, to the detriment, uh, putting that in air quotes, right, yeah. of the outcome of the game, right? I would want to see him doing skills like that, hitting the ball at pace, 
you know, taking the ball into contact like that, finding finding the gaps. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that's a big a big point for us at the developmental level. Yeah, all the learning. Here's Patrick McDonald. Takes it in. Henry Spencer pulls him down. That's a great a carry, running his feet through the contact there. We do see that a lot with the varsity as well, running the feet in the contact to try and get those extra meters, try and keep the ball alive. But it looks like there's a turnover. Ivan Tomac passes it out. And a good active tackle, two-team tackle. Looks like there's diving in. Yeah, he just came off his feet there when he was uh, looking to go for that poach just before, but that was a definitely a good double tackle from those guys. Both of them got in and hit that contact hard. Also, so we're not really seeing it much this game, but what what is Las Vegas main strategy since most of their guys are really, really small? I mean, this St. James team is also really small, but usually other teams are a lot bigger than we are. So what, what do we do to compensate for that? So the biggest thing would be for us is just trying to play at pace one of the things we didn't execute well against St. Thomas Aquinas in the first game we played today, right? So we were definitely undersized in that game. And um, we, we didn't we didn't play with pace. You know, it was just slow overall. So um, the rucks were slow. And then even when we're running our back line uh, plays, uh, you know, they're not running onto the ball at pace. They're not playing fast. And so even though we're undersized, all of these guys are, are strong, right? They all do the weight training programs. They're all strong. And, um, uh, and, th and they can all move and they can all run. M many coaches have have made the comment to us, you know, how do you get your guys to be so shifty? How do you get your guys to be, you know, how do you get your guys so fast like that? And yeah, um, it, it just a, a number one way we have we have to be at some, <laughs> some level. It's a, it's a it's a necessity if we're going to try to win games. Um, uh, and then obviously we do things in training and we play a lot of touch games, um, you know, so just just rugby with with it's a, two, a two hand touch and um, that really helps to work on guys, you know, that that shiftiness. Um, um, and so yeah, that would be the. The biggest thing I would say is is uh, we try to do differently, maybe from other teams. Is we we're not gonna we're not gonna just pound teams like that. Uh, we want to play at we want to play at pace, and we have to utilize that to our advantage. And, you know, the boys always the boys always laugh at me. You know, as I'm always saying, dog him, dog him, dog him. You know, they always it's one of those things they they, they always laugh about that. But it's it's true. That's what we want to try to do. And so when we execute that, um, we do very well against teams. And when we don't, we struggle. Um, so it, it's just getting the boys in the mindset that yeah, we're we're smaller but let's use that to our advantage, right? They have disadvantages because they're bigger, you know? Um, just as we have disadvantages because we're smaller, and it's just a matter of trying to to, uh, to understand where we can exploit them and, and use what we're good at. Indeed. And JP just had a decent run there, returning off the kick. The ball went backwards, so it won't be a knock-on. And we have Sam Green subbing in for nine. As Andrew Six breaks the line and is weaving his way through traffic, Looks to fake a up pass. On the seat. Well done. Get over him now. Yeah, that's a good ruck support there. This side is really good with their ruck support. I tell you what, they get to those rucks really quick. They're insanely fast. And here's Sam Green. Pumping his legs, looking to get the try. Now also when you're on goal line, you have to be patient. Absolutely. And there's another try for La Salette. Hugh Dvorak. A good run. I think this is his first try of his career. Yeah, that's good to see for him. Happy for him for that one. He came on as a second half sub, and he was really excited to travel this weekend. You can see him right now. He's, he's pretty excited about that one. So speaking of all that shiftiness and uh, these different players like Seamus Hanlon, uh, who like hit really hard, what's, what's the potential that you see in these guys for like A-side like in years to come? I think these guys have a lot of potential. Um, you know, we're trying to get back to the point where we're going to go back and compete in the national tournament. Um, you know, some coaches have said some things to us that they, you know, they'd like to see us back there, and we, we'd like to go back there. And I think that we've got a lot of guys here that, um, you know, could could develop into a lot of into really good players. And, um, you know, I, I think we could definitely get back to that level of play. Um, you know, these guys, they, they come in and they work really hard, and they're a good group of dudes. I mean, they, they listen, they take correction, they're coachable. Um, you know, uh, all, all these types of intangibles that are um, I necessary to be an athlete. You know, it's not just the, the X's and O's and the technique. Um, and so, yeah, they, I, I think these guys definitely have a lot of potential. They're excited to play, which is good to see. And with the effort, because Coach Ruscio would always say that you can't 
have, oh, sorry. Looks like a yellow card here on the bay. Yeah, so it, it was looked like too many too many high tackles going on. The, the the sir had definitely warned them about that a couple of times, and so at some point, uh, when the when the same penalty gets getting committed, um, even if the the penalty that um, uh, you know that that didn't look like a particularly egregious high tackle, but because of the amount of them and they had been warned, um, the the ref will start handing out uh, yellow cards for things like that. That's a great carry and contact, great way to keep running his feet there. That was like Darren Esparza, and that's what I mean right there. They're right over the ruck right away. That's a good handoff also by Seamus Hanlon. It's kind of like a quarterback handoff right there. That's a good pop. Henry Betts has done that a couple of times. I've seen he popped the ball up to guys supporting him, um, you know, from the ground, right? So we were, we're, we were playing here in, you know, in op open play, and, you know, um, sometimes it is difficult to get to the rucks. These guys do a really good job of it, but he's popped the ball up a couple of times like that, which is a, uh, you know, that, that's, just, that's just being aware, right? And that's, that's really good to see from him. He, he's a really good player. And Seamus Hanlon scores another try for La Salette. And we have some subs coming in. Number 22, Joseph Romero, a sophomore, also known as Trousers from the St. Ignatius game, coming in for Broken Hanlon at wing. Why do they call him Trousers? Well, I called him Trousers at the beginning because I didn't know who it was at first, and it looked like he was wearing pants. He's got those le he got the, the leggings. The leggings on, yeah. So, <laughs> I, so I called him Trousers, and it kind of stuck. And we also have Andrew Gross. Coming in for Ben Blood. Looks like he's going to be a flanker. And he's also a jumper as well. So let's see how he does with these lineouts. Even though there hasn't been very many. Especially no, not very many kicks to touch this game. They've been really low on the penalties. Now here comes, here comes one of the bigger questions. Why, why, is rugby, why is rugby important for the uh, formation of young men, young Catholic men? Well, uh, one of the biggest things is, oh, this is a great run here from Henry Betts. Let's see what they do here. A good offload. Before I answer your question. A good offload Darren, uh, to Darren Espars and a good quick ruck. Gross gets over there pretty fast. That's a good ruck from, from Andrew Gross there. Got to play alive. Let's see what they do. Hits that gap. They got a big overload here. This very looks good gap. Go in. Marco Cruz looks to make the kick easy for himself and places it in the middle. Yeah, they had acres of space out there. It looked like it was a 4v2. Seemed like almost like the entire team was in that back line ready to, <laughs> ready to do some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, to your question of the formational aspect of rugby. So rugby is a sport where, you know, we can have a lot of guys play, right? So you feel the 15-man team. So just on a, on, a, on a simple fact of a numbers game, we can just have more guys you know, out on a field playing at a time. So that's that's very important. Um, you know, other sports, it's more difficult, right? Basketball, you can only field five guys on a court uh, at a single time. So at some level, you're just limited by the numbers. Obviously, there's many formational aspects of basketball. <coughs> and even the formational aspect of sport in general is pretty, um, you know, pretty consistent um, amongst any sport, right? Many things that I'm going to say as regards rugby are, are true for basketball and are true for cross country. Um, you know, like I said, it just kind of becomes a, a numbers game at some level. Um, but then every sport has its thing, right? So, um, you know, obviously having to deal with the contact of rugby, uh, even having to deal with, um, you know, like I like you had talked about earlier, we're often undersized, and so now you have to go, uh, you know, have to go fight against a, a, a larger opponent, and it's, it's definitely something that the boys uh, struggle with, and it's a, and it's a, a hurdle for a lot of them to overcome. You know, it's you know, at some level, it's always it's always David fighting Goliath, right? Like we're we're always yeah we're always David, and so. Um, um, to have to get them to overcome that, and and um, I think that's a big confidence booster for them, right? To be able to go in and and uh, and hit somebody physically bigger than you, and and realize that you know, hey, I can do this. Hey, I'm okay. Hey, I can play against this. Or that's a huge confidence boost for the boys. Um, um, and then yeah, to keep running with that, right? Like to get them to understand um, how to deal with pressure and how to deal with their emotions in high pressure scenarios. Right, so a big thing, uh, um, you know, for any for men and women, but we're obviously we're a, we're a boys' school, so a big thing for men is getting them to understand how to control their emotions, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, you, you you don't really grip somebody's emotions in in uh, in the classroom, for example, right? I mean, people's emotions typically aren't gripped in a scenario <laughs> like that. And not 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 to say that the classroom is not important. Of course, that's not what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying it's important for different reasons. And so, sport is really important for that emotional aspect. Um, getting them to understand that, getting them to 
to, um, you know, hey, I feel really nervous, but I still have to go do this. I still have to go execute. I still have to go do my job, even though I'm, I'm scared or I'm tired or I'm a little bit banged up. That's a, that's a real formational aspect for the boys. Um, and, and at some level, uh, especially for, for, for young men, you know, uh, you're, you're, just, uh, you're almost just wired to deal with things on a physical level, right? Um, um, and so sport is a really good way because it's, it's obviously a physical thing. It deals very much with, um, um, yeah, with physical things. <laughs> and so um, um, to get them to, uh, um, you know, engage in that conflict physically will we'll fare them well as they, as they mature. Thank you. That was Andrew Sig with the try. An interception there and a good run from our number 13. So he's coming off the field. He's and had so a great day today, Andrew Sig. He does. He and a great day today. I remember hearing one time in the bunker, and he was, he was really excited after he played it for the first time in, um, in the Lindenwood tournament. I was just like, yo, how was it? And he's like, oh man, it's it's great. I didn't re I didn't realize rugby was so fun. And I was like, yeah. And he, so I'm glad you're enjoying it. And so he's he's really positive and really excited to be playing right now. And he loves his classmates. He loves the team. I'm very glad that he's using his athleticism because he is very gifted, very athletic. Yeah, I'm happy he's been able to play this year. It looks like he's having a really good time. I know he was maybe you know he had a had a non non rugby related injury that was a uh, uh, you know kind of hard for him and so um, coming back off of that and he had a really great year with basketball, um, um, and then to see him come out here and, and and be on the rugby field has been has been a pleasure to watch. Seems like he's really embraced it, so it's been good to see. I yep. guess they uh, they called that that one early. Um, I don't know if that was a decision from the coach or if there was a a certain cap on the score here. Yeah, seven minutes early, 66-0. Lasolette's, Lasolette's JV has not been scored on yet today. So it's good to see this good formation here. The Lasolette's definitely been learning. And they definitely have things to learn from the A side. And obviously, good coaching staff. So, well, that's game. And thank you for watching Lost Set Rugby. And thank you, Coach, for being on this broadcast with me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Elijah. Thank you very much. And we will see you tomorrow at the the A-side game and the B-side game. will be at the same time, I believe. Um, I do not, I'm not quite sure what time they're going to be at. Uh, do you know? Both of them will be at noon tomorrow. They'll both be at noon tomorrow. So the A-side game will be broadcasted, and it will also the A-side game will also be um, live stream. I don't think the B-side game will be live streamed. I think the film will be posted up later. So just be aware of that. And thank you for watching Lost in Rugby. Thank you, Coach. And, well, farewell until tomorrow. Thank you. Take care.